It may be a bit behind schedule and it probably has involved a lot more politics than anyone would like to see in sport, but rugby has once again pulled through and we will be getting our second round of the rugby championship continuing on here in Perth at Optus Stadium as the Wallabies get back in action, taking on the All Blacks here in round number two. Hello everyone and welcome back along to your home of rugby and the second round, the second part of the second round of the rugby championship. You may remember a couple of weeks ago, almost a week ago, we had the Pumas and the Springboks going head to head today. The resumption of the tournament continues. We've had all the politics, all the rubbish and it's finally now behind us and we've made our way to Australia here at Optus for this next matchup. It is great to be finally back in action as well for you sports fans out there. How good is it to have rugby back on our screens? Let's take a look at the 215s and 23s to be fair that'll be lining up for tonight's big matchup here in Perth. The Wallabies of course at home and this is their best chance and best case to provide a victory against the All Blacks. And this is the 15 they're going with. Starting with their front row, of course, it is James Slipper, Flau Fuanga, and Alan Alalatoa, who we one, two, and three up against them for the All Blacks. Of course, traveling across here in Perth, the weather is different. Everything changes for the visiting side. George Bauer, Cody Taylor, and Nepo Laulala will be the opposition front row. How will the change of conditions suit these guys? We will find out over these next 80 minutes. Moving into the second row, Darcy Swain and Matt Phillip go up against the experienced combination of Brody Retallick and Scott Barrett in for the missing Sam Whitelock. Not too many changes in either of these two packs as we move to the back row and see Lockie Swinton alongside his captain Michael Hooper and Rob Valentini wearing number eight for the Wallabies. On the other side of things, no change here for the All Blacks. Akira Ioani, Dalton, Papali'i, and of course a new captain without Sam Whitelock in the team, Adi Salvia at number eight, takes the captain's armband for the New Zealand team. Moving into the back line, it's electric wide up players. Tate McDermott and Brad Weber get the nod and the number nine jumpers. Of course, no Aaron Smith here for the All Blacks either. He is missing in action, so it's a completely changed number 19 combination. Into the fly halves, Noah Lolosio starts at 10 and he's got a real test ahead of him up against Bowden Barrett who comes back into the All Blacks team after missing a few weeks now on the bench. Moving into the midfield, this is where the interesting things really come about for the Wallabies. They welcome back one of the most destructive men in Australian rugby history, Samu Karevi, wearing 12, and he partners up with Lee Nikitao in the midfield. So surprisingly, there is no place here at all for the destructive hunter Paisami. For the All Blacks, a true test here for David Harvili. And he finally welcomes back Anton Leonard Brown, who will wear 13. On the wings, no changes here. Marika Collar and Betty will be up against Will Jordan. And on the other side of things, it will be Andrew Callaway up against Rico Yuani. At the back, there's a change in the 15 jumper for the All Blacks. Jordy Barrett gets the nod in the 15. He's up against, of course, Tom Banks, who keeps his spot there at the back for the Wallabies. Moving into the bench, there's plenty to talk about here. And... The one really taking the headlines will be the man in 19, Isaac Rodder. Much like Karevi, welcome back to the Wallabies and, of course, Australian rugby. Alongside him on the bench for the Australians, uh, Lonergan, Bell and Tupo will be the front row replacements. Of course, Rodder, the second row tall timber man. Uh, Pete Samu will be in 20. And for the backs, Nick White, Reese Hodge and Jordan Pattaya are the back on replacements. For the All Blacks, it's the three T's once again. Takiaho, Tuanafuaki, and Tavao, the front row replacements. Devai will wear 19, and Blackadder comes in with 20. For the backs, Pirinara, McKenzie, and Bridge will be there to add the impact later on in the matchup. We're all set to go here off the stadium. It looks packed. Look at all the people everywhere. If only it would be like that, actually, it would be just fantastic. Let's get down for kickoff. And of course, first things first, of course, the All Blacks were to set up. For the Haka to set things alight. This is into this one. Peranara back in the All Blacks. Back leading the Haka.
Oh, a passionate lead of the Haka there by Ali Savia, who joins an increasing list of players who have led that Haka triangle for the All Blacks. And we are quickly underway as Bonham Barrett kicks deep down and is taken down from Tate McDermott. Release. And the Wallabies secure possession for the first time in tonight's matchup. Here is Fanger with his first touch in a number of weeks now for the Wallabies. And a great ruck there from the All Blacks. Turns the ball over. Weber, little short side dab, finds it to Nepo La La La. And a little sideways momentum there from the All Blacks. Tight end prop finds him losing the ball. McDermott getting it back and flying with a bit of room fighting Hooper and support as well as the two teams stuck it out on this left hand side of the pitch. We've seen no action back towards the middle as a hit up there from Swinton. Lose it. Popo Lingeliana quickly there. And Harvey half cap there for the inside centre. Almost scorching through. Here is Weber. To Ritalik, oh, massive hole for a massive man. Brody Ritalik finding Savia. Room out wide, up in the line. It's Jordy Barrett and the All Blacks strike early, strike fast, and two turnovers inside the 22 has been killer for the Wallabies already. Wow, goodness me, you don't get away with this. Big turnover play from Dalton Popaliti. We almost saw Harvili go through and look at this, keeping the ball alive. Ritalik and Savia keeping it nicely for that man. Jordy Barrett up in the line. It's great to see him in the action. Great to see him starting as well, but his impact up in that attacking line is a major, major threat. And now it will be Brother Bowden who will slot the extra two and the All Blacks make it 7-0 over the Wallabies very early on here. Great start by the visitors. Not the best from these guys in the green and gold, of course. Eight minutes gone, 7-0 down. Noah Luasio kicks off and really the most important thing for these two sides is Ballard takes the ball down for the All Blacks. Is clearing out their 22s. Good exit plays is what they need, but when you got got Papali in a lot of space there, you're just about good for him. But he has knocked the ball on, which now gives a great chance for the Wallabies to attack. Rob Valentini goes through a little scamper before losing out again. And we're seeing a Kiriwani, but it was Dalton Papali who knocked that ball on. Weber hit it short to him, and there he goes, straight into contact. Up against Lockie Swinson. And losing that ball. No, oh, it was a good tackle there. Yes, Crouch. it was a good tackle from Popeye Lee Fine. over top. Went Savia. Set. But the Wallabies, of course, still have the scrum feed. Just inside the 22. Great attacking chance and a great scrum too from the Wallabies pack. McDermott holds up the play. Goes left side. Connor Betty. One to beat as Will Jordan and he's equal to the task. Takes him down in a thunderous heap. Zicky Tell right there. Here's McDermott. Great break from Tate McDermott. And he carries over the line. McDermott scores. The Wallabies are back. And he has been a star into this Wallabies team this season. We know what he can do at the Reds. He's done it for two or three years now. But Tate McDermott, that is sensational rugby skills from the scrum half. He was left alone to play his own game. They set off him at fattest danger. Through Jordy Barrett, he went up against his opposite number, Brad Weber. Definitely outdone in the size and power department there. Great carry from McDermott. Great try, the Wallabies. They are back in the game. And back for Lolosio to tie things all up. And he's just nuts that one to the right hand side. It remains seven points to five. Well, that's disappointing. For Lolo Sio, he tries to wave it off as just a silly error, but still that could cost the Wallabies in the long run. 7-5 the score. We are just 17 minutes into the game and already we've had two stellar drives from these two teams. Grace. It's your Blacks compete once more at the breakdown, but the Wallabies do well to hold on here. Neither side have any intent of kicking the ball away as 
Switching back to the midfield. Samu gets a touch and Hooper. Taken high from Ritala. Can we see our first penalty of the game going the way of the Wallabies? But it's a big, big man there, Brady Ritalik. Couldn't keep that one down. Trying to get that quick playoff from Michael Hooper. Kicked away from Lola Seo. Finds good distance on it as well. The Wallabies set another attack just outside the All Blacks 22. Flying it to throw. Everyone compresses up here. It's a full line out, but it's a good take by the Wallabies. They try and maul it. The All Blacks defuse that quickly into the midfield. They go! Beautiful ball, Karevi! And Lola Seo goes straight into the 22. There's the impact of Samu Karevi. Straight away, we said. This time, McDermott dealt with. Big tackle there from Scott Barrett. They wait at the back, Darcy Swain. He has a little bit of a rumble, but goes straight into a powerful tackle. Marty Savia, turnover. But my lead, can he get a wide? No, Ritalik just about head away for Will Jordan. He is rapid as well. Weber, back to Bowden Barrett, and surprisingly kicked, but it's carried back there. That's going to be a line out back of the All Blacks 22. Massive error there from Bowden Barrett. Was taken from outside the 22 from Brad Webber. That is a crucial mistake. Firing it to throw. Massive attacking chance here for the Wallabies. Dragged down nicely there from Matt Phillip. McDermott. This time gets the Hooper. Frost receiver on the outside. This is brilliant for the Wallabies. Callaway could be in. Finds it back and field for a drop goal for Karevi. Welcome back to the Wallabies. Samu Karevi in a way. We never thought we would see him score points off the boot in space of a drop goal. Well, we've seen it all now. A Samu Karevi drop goal. Put that one on the mantelpiece, Samu. You're probably never going to get another one. Barrett gets us back underway. Over the head it goes of a couple of Wallabies players who were actually trying to tend to some injuries there. It's a good breakaway from McDermott once again. Finds Connor and Betsy with a bit of space down the left. Here's Philip, nice offload. And it's Samu Karevi, who has been a monster in this match since really getting involved in the last five minutes or so. Wallabies lead, 8 7. And back it goes to Karevi, doing a lot more kicking than we'll probably expect to see him do in that number 12 jumper. Here's Jordy Barrett going back, and it's nicely claimed as well from the Wallabies. Flying it, dragging that kick back in. A Pope Lee, third turnover for him. And the number seven jumper, Bowden Barrett. Wanawati Savia, plenty of room here for Rico Iwani. Gives again to David Harvili. Support on his inside. Back to Savia, intercepted by Banks. Oh, that is beautiful for all the Wallabies. Just saved the day. Savia, though, over him quickly. The All Blacks get it straight back. Here's Harvili once more. Release. He's got to protect the breakdown. The All Blacks very good at the breakdown today already. We've seen it a number of times. Turnovers from Pop Ali. Then it's proving to be a big difference maker. Here is a run from Akira Ioani. Strong carry in the center of the field. Now gets up for Lalala. -la -la. He tries to blow his way through. Can't do it this time. And the Wallabies, speaking of good protecting Iraq, they turn it over. And now they'll look to attack. They give it away. Lola Sia says, no, 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 boys. We will not. We will go to half time under the pump. And the good clearance kick away has come, well, a bit too late. They might have needed that earlier, but they take the lead into the break. The Wallabies, eight points to seven over the All Blacks. And look at that territorial difference for New Zealand. 83%. They would have wished they'd done more from that. But both sides have had their chances. The Wallabies certainly taken the few they have had already. But possession seems even. As long as it stays that way, we are going to be in for a tight tussle through these 80 minutes. Back to halfway for Lolo Seal. He kicks us off short this time. And there's Akira Ioane who pulls it in for the All Blacks. And more attention proving to be a crucial thing. It's his Brad Weber. Oh, great offload to Anton Leonard Brown. Who finally gets a little bit of space. Leonard Brown up towards the 22. Can't quite get away from Banks. Great start for the All Blacks. And here is a great break from Arnie Savia. What a play from the All Black captain. Savia scores and the All Blacks take the lead back. 12-8, the score kick to come. But a beautiful piece of awareness from Arnie Savia. What's this from Anton Leonard Brown? 
takes out Banks. He gets buried in the rock. And then look at this, Savia looks up, has the little chink, a little dummy, shows up his opposite number, Raw Valentini, who had no idea what was going on there. And we know the pace, along with the power, this time it was the agile skills of Adi Savia that seen him sneak through a gap around the breakdown and power home with that acceleration and speed. Brilliant work from the All Black skipper here is Bowden Barrett putting over another two points. He has been good with the boot tonight. One error kicked the ball out in the full earlier, which cost his team dearly. But other than that, he has been fairly sound with his brother as well, Jordy chipping in. 14 8, the lead is six. A dangerous, dangerous number to lead by. Requires a conversion, though, which is probably the more dangerous thing for the Wallabies. Here is a Nepo Lalalo, the great old flow to Bernard Barrett. He looks Bunch. inside. Oh, Rico Yuani knocks on. And the goal line was begging again for the All Blacks, who are really starting to turn things up now. Akira Yuani dropped off beautifully for Nepo Lalala and Bernard Barrett switching play back to Rico, Crouch. who got Bind. smashed, dislodging the ball. And it all come Set. unstuck very quickly there for the All Blacks. So all of these survive. That was a real scare. Speaking of scares, that is a tipsy turvy scrum of Hoover. I've seen one. Little Osseo goes very flat. So oh, he's dropped it. It's gone backwards, says the referee. And we will continue on. But that really does stump up your set play when your first receiver can't even catch the ball. Here is Valentini. Oh, back to El Alatoa, who is smashed. The Wallaby struggle for ball retention. Hooper comes in and clears things up nicely. McDermott opens up the space for Banks. Banks is in now. Oh, wow. Knocked on from Tom Banks, who got absolutely decked from Jordy Barrett. What a thumper of a hit. Let's watch this one again. It was worth another view. It was a great play from the Wallabies to see it through. Oh, my goodness me. 15 Crouch. on 15, an absolute Fine. cruncher. Jordan Shit. Barrett has been an insane form at the back. As the All Blacks set another scrum, Brad Weber off the feet, the side of Adi Savia. Barrett at first receiver, gives to Barrett, it's Bowden to Jordy, and jordy has got plenty of room. Oh, he's knocked it on again! And he had an unmarked Rico Yuani outside him, who just cannot catch a break tonight. He's been heavily involved as Jordy Barrett from fullback. Take a look at this. Bowden went wide after running flat and watched him evaluate the space, trying to draw in Callaway enough and if he could, Banks, but just couldn't get the two of them together Crouch. or beat one of them and create Bind. the overlap. In the end, the Wallabies defense once Set. again holds tight. It's 14 8. McDermott feeds another steady Wallaby scrum. Just inside their own 10 meter line. Revy runs at them well, Cotter and Betsy. And again, it's Will Jordan who's got work to do. There's plenty of black jerseys coming across, but the Wallabies do well to retain in a very low number breakdown. Here's Hooper, offloads nicely to Valentini. Oh, the All Blacks on that ball very quickly. Big turnover coming in. There it is for Weber. The way to Barrett, didn't really want to Rico he actually catches the ball for once and straight away gives it to Bowden Barrett. Hospital pass if ever we've seen one. Here's Akira Ioani. Getting involved now as well. Another strong carry. Pick and go from Cody Taylor. Sweeps away one Taylor. Back to Nipo Lalala. Rotala gets an offload as well. Here's Jordy Barrett back up in the line. Anton in the brown. Going back towards the midfield of Bowden Barrett. And that is a high shot. And trouble for the Wallabies. For Lau Fianga. Going high on the fleet footed. Bowden Barrett. Surely you take three years. Surely. You take it outside that seven points, and that is exactly what they are going to do. Right in front, but a good distance out. 45. Barrett strikes it. That is Bowden, and it does not cover in enough. Australia to the right, and maybe Geordie should have taken that one. Oh, that is a big miss. And it just leaves that door ajar for the Wallabies. And Noah Lolo see if he could get a conversion as well. 22 dropout goes straight to Hardy Savi. Oh, that is brilliant as well. And Bona Baravich gets the ball back from Rico, who has no confidence in running the ball out at the moment. Another move breaks down from the All Blacks, where they could have scored 
what will be a critical try in this matchup. Popa let you over the ball very quickly, gets another ruck turnover. He has been immense in that number seven Crouch. jumper. But Fine. of course, Bowden Barrett knocking that ball on. Rico Ioane though Set. needs to get some confidence in this game. Every time he touches the ball, he's looking for a pass back inside or somewhere rather than back himself to actually beat defenders, which is proving an issue for your finisher. Here is the playhouse of that dead side for the Wallabies. Oh, Banks, beautiful win to Lalo Sio. He's still got Conor Benny with him. Across comes Johnny Barrett. He goes inside to Michael Hooper. Brad Webber gets chase. Webber gets him down. But it's a beautiful flow to Conor Benny. And it's seven minutes to go. The Wallabies could steal the lead. 13 14. A kick to come. How about that pass from Michael Hooper? Brad Webber gave it everything. Tom Banks inside to Lolo Sio. Out he went to Michael Hooper. Watch this rundown from the little Brad Webber. Beat him for pace, but immaculate finish from Corin Betty after the offload from Michael Hooper. The Wallabies blast out from nowhere, and the pressure on this man right now is huge. You gotta say, if only they got the penalty to the All Blacks, it could have been much safer. He's blown it left! Oh my word! The young man has certainly not dealt with that at all. And the All Blacks keep hold of their lead by a slender margin of just one point. Is there one more twist in this one? For either side, who knows where it's gonna go? Barrett goes short, and Michael Hooper. The magician of just moments ago is absolutely smashing that breakdown. Are they going to hold on to this, the Wallabies? It doesn't look like it. He's been dominated by two of the All Black back rowers. Here's Barrett on oh, Lala. There's only big men out here. Finally, they get it to Harvey. Will Jordan is screaming for possession. Instead, it goes back to Yuani again. Finally, Jordan gets it, but he's wrapped up very quickly. Short. It go oh, my word. That is a punishing shoulder. And it looks like James Slipper is trying to appeal his case here, but that, my word, was brutal. Now, what do you do? A minute to play. You've got the lead. They're taking the three. Unbelievable. If you nail this, surely it's over. Take your time. Line it up. Put it dead. No matter what you do here, Bowden Barrett, he absolutely slots it. 80 minutes goes up, and the All Blacks hang on to a very... Very slender, very tight, and very close victory over the Wallabies here in Perth. That is a really high quality matchup. And a lot of chances going picking for both of these sides. Plenty of line breaks, plenty of mistakes as well. The Wallabies certainly gave it everything as it was. That scrambling defense from both sides that did spoil a lot of chances. Will Jordan. He's really looking around, wondering what he has to do to get a try. It was two each in the end. McDermott and Corabetti for the Wallaby Savia and Barrett. Which one? Well, it was Jordy Barrett and it was Artie Savia. We got so many brothers in this All Black side, you just don't know what to do. But Barrett now two conversions and the penalty goal. Ultimately, the difference as Summer Karevi got one drop goal. But the difference, of course, was the two misses from Noah Lolosio, which would have made it 17 points apiece if he had nailed both of those kicks. Having a look at the full-time stats, the All Blacks absolutely dominated territory. Did well on possession as well, toning that slightly from the halftime break. But both sides had to do a lot of work on the fence. They had to do a lot of work out of their own halves as well. But ultimately, the All Blacks hung strong to the end, had better goal kicking, which often you don't say about Bowdoin Barrett. But they get the victory here at Optus Stadium in Perth over the Wallabies in round two of the Rugby Championship. I'll be again, of course, for the next match coming your way from the competition, so stay tuned for that one. But until then, thanks for tuning in, as always, and I'll see you next time. Take care.